What is a dual fuel unit? Today, I'm going to explain to you what a dual fuel unit is, talk about the operation of a dual fuel, the price difference between a dual fuel and a heat pump or a dual fuel and a gas unit. I'm going to explain to you why I would advise a homeowner to get a dual fuel because I don't always offer a dual fuel as an option for a customer when they're looking to replace their HVAC system. But there are certain scenarios where I definitely offer it because of certain reasons. I'm going to explain those reasons. So we're going to go check out that job here in a minute, but I'm going to explain to you what a dual fuel is. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. A dual fuel unit is a heat pump and a gas furnace combined. A dual fuel unit doesn't have one source of heating. It has a primary source of heat, which is usually a heat pump that provides heating and cooling throughout the entire year. And it has a secondary source of heating, which is usually a propane gas furnace or a natural gas furnace. A dual fuel unit has two sources of heat and they're both combined. It's not just a heat pump and it's not just a gas furnace. It is both. A dual fuel unit can look like this. This is a packaged dual fuel unit, or a dual fuel unit can look like this. This is a split dual fuel, and that is a gas furnace, an outdoor heat pump, and an indoor coil. So the indoor coil and the outdoor heat pump, that can be your air conditioning or your heating, and then you've got a gas furnace, which is either propane or natural gas. When my customer is going to replace their existing heating and cooling system, I don't always offer dual fuel as an option. In fact, the only time I offer dual fuel as an option is when my customer is heating with propane. They have a propane tank outside their house and they have a propane company that fills up that tank. And usually the propane companies that I'm used to dealing with, I hear my customers say things like, when I call them, it takes them a few weeks or several weeks or a month or two to get out to fill my tank back up and I run out of fuel or I almost run out of fuel. And to me, that's unreliable. The second thing is, is they paid a certain price during the summer to fill up their tank up and then the price is two or three times higher during the winter. So for the same fuel source, they're paying two or three times. To me, that is just not good. I don't think that's a good idea. This is a very non-renewable source of fuel to use to heat your home with. And whenever I can offer them a dual fuel, meaning I can help them to not burn as much of that propane to heat their home, which saves them money and helps them to maybe not be able to run out of propane during the winter, then I'm going to offer that dual fuel. We're about to go check out the job and I'm going to show you this dual fuel unit that we've installed. I'm going to explain the price difference though first and then I'm going to explain the operation of the dual fuel. And we're going to talk about a few components and some things you need to know if you're thinking about getting a dual fuel unit or you're thinking about installing one. Price difference. What is the price difference between a package heat pump or package gas unit and a dual fuel? Or what is the price difference between a split gas unit or a split heat pump and a dual fuel. The price difference is going to be around $2,000 and it could be more. It really just depends on the brand and the company that is selling you or installing that dual fuel for you. But for us, it's around $2,000 and that is because you're buying both of those heat sources in one unit and you're also having to add different components. Maybe you're having to pull a new thermostat wire because you've got to install an outdoor sensor. I'll show you what an outdoor sensor looks like. And then you're also having to get a more expensive thermostat because it has to have dual fuel capability. And you have to know about programming when you have a dual fuel. I've got a video on how to program a dual fuel Click this link right here and go check out that video to learn more about that dual fuel. Right now, I'm going to explain the operation. You can match your dual fuel system with a conventional heat pump that looks like this, or you can match your dual fuel heating system with a more efficient heat pump that looks like this. This most likely variable speed that has an inverter driven compressor. What's the difference? The difference is the balance point. And the balance point, if you want to learn more about this, I've got a whole video about it. Check it out right here to learn more about balance point and how to fill out a balance point chart. 
But the balance point is when the load of your structure, the capacity of your structure, exceeds the capacity of the heat pump. The lower the temperature outside, the lower the ambient conditions, the lower the heating performance is going to be. And when you have a high efficiency heat pump, you have better heating performance in lower ambient conditions than a conventional heat pump. I'm going to say that again. A conventional heat pump has lower heating performance in lower ambient conditions or lower outside temperatures than a high efficiency inverter driven variable speed heat pump. So if you match your dual fuel heating system with a variable speed high efficiency outdoor heat pump that looks like this, then you are going to be able to heat your home even when it's down to zero degrees, maybe even negative five, like the HMH7 that I matched this dual fuel system with. And I'm going to show you that job. So whenever you have a dual fuel, you have a thermostat that is for a dual fuel unit and you have an outdoor sensor. You don't have to have an outdoor sensor. You can actually just push the mode button until it says emergency heat and you will switch from your heat pump mode to your gas furnace and you'll be able to choose when you use your gas furnace. That's one way you can operate a dual fuel unit or you can use an outdoor sensor and you can program your thermostat and it's all in that video. I put it down in the link in the description for programming a dual fuel unit. But you can use a sensor to measure the outdoor temperature and you can set your thermostat for the actual balance point for the unit. So if your balance point is 25 degrees and below 25 degrees, your heat pump is no longer going to be reliable for heating performance for your home, then your thermostat will automatically be able to switch to your gas furnace. Having an outdoor temperature sensor like this and a programmed thermostat that will lock out the outdoor heat pump whenever the balance point temperature is reached will provide you with a more efficient heating system for your home during those lower ambient conditions. And it's a great way to switch from your primary heating source to your secondary heating source. Now we're gonna go look at the job that we just finished up. It's a dual fuel system made by York. It's matched with an outdoor heat pump that's a York HMH7. This is a 17 sear horizontal discharge heat pump. It's variable capacity, variable. So it can heat down to negative temperatures and still have good heating performance. And this is a great unit. I've installed it in several barn dominiums. If you want to check out a couple more of those jobs, go check it out down the link in the description. I've got a two stage. 90% gas furnace. I've got a coil. This is a horizontal install, so it's not vertical. It's in the attic like this. And then I've got that outdoor heat pump. And then I've got an HX3 thermostat. So I hope you enjoy looking at the job. Hope you've enjoyed the video so far. If you have, hit the like button, subscribe, smash that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. And let me know down below what you've learned so far. I really appreciate it. Also, let me know who you are and let me know where you're from. Let's go check out this job. HX3 thermostat has two little bitty Phillips screws, one for the top, one for the bottom. Take the thermostat out of the wall. I'm going to show you the wiring. So this is where we can have our outdoor sensor, S1 and S2. And we don't have one because we're not going to use that sensor. I'm going to talk about the options I gave the customer for having a sensor and having a certain temperature to where the thermostat will automatically switch over to gas because we've got propane. So we've got our orange right here and we've got our second stage cooling, first stage cooling, fan, first stage heating, second stage heating, that's for gas, and then R and C are 24 volts. We did not do communicating because this is not a York Affinity Series unit. It is a HMH7 outdoor unit. I'll show you the outdoor unit. Here's the outdoor unit. This is an HMH7. It's a three ton, so 36,000 BTU. And it's a heat pump. And there's the propane tank. There's where it enters the house. There's the regulator. Here's the gas furnace and the coil. You can see it's a foamed house. Really good job on the ductwork. Very impressed. And then there's the gas line that comes in. It's propane, so we had to install a propane kit. 
I'll show you the installation kit that comes with the HMH7 that had to be wired in. There's the little installation kit that came with the HMH7. It's already been wired in. You can see I've got W1, my white wire for my first stage gas heat, W2 for my second stage of gas heating. We got a float switch. This is our shutoff, and then we've got our little pressure switch for the propane kit to make sure that if we ever go low on propane, it will shut off the uh, unit from actually working because it's wired into the flame sensor, so flame sensor won't work uh, because it'll be open, so it won't light, and that will prevent soot from building up inside the heat exchanger. We don't want that. It's like we got a little Y, a little T here with a drain. So, looks good. Now let's talk about the setup. Gave the customer two options to set this system up. One is I install an outdoor sensor and we pick a temperature, uh, preferably the balance point. Uh, if you don't know what balance point is, I've got a video on that. I'll post a link in the description on how to figure out the balance point for a unit and fill out a balance point chart, a heat pump balance point chart. So, one is outdoor sensor and there's a particular temperature whether that's 40 or 30 degrees or 20 degrees and that sensor with the thermostat will automatically kick the unit over from heat pump mode heating to gas so it'll turn the furnace on the second option I gave the customer is don't install a sensor and whenever you want to turn the gas heat on you just turn the thermostat on emergency heat so I'm going to show you how this is set up and I'm going to turn it on emergency heat, show you how to do that and show you the furnace coming on. Right now the thermostat is in the off mode. You can see that there. You go here, you push heat. This will activate the heat mode for the heat pump. This will activate the cooling and this will do auto. And this is emergency heat. So right now we got it set to 73 and the gas furnace should come on. We'll go check. Customer liked the fact that he could control when the gas heat comes on and he wanted to choose that as the option So I said sounds great Usually I do install an outdoor sensor and we have a particular temperature where it switches over but Controlling how much fuel you use is a good thing because then you can anticipate when you need to refuel your tank All right, it's coming on there it goes now that went to low stage so you got a two stage gas valve if you don't know how to set gas pressure for two stage for propane I'll put a link to a video so you can learn how that's emergency heat now we're going to take it off emergency heat and we are going to put it on regular heat and I'm going to show you that the heat pump will then turn on and you can see that. The return grill is 20 by 30. That gives us 600 square inches because you want 200 per ton. So 20 by 30 filter for this unit. And then we've got 12 six inch uh, lines coming to four by 12 ceiling vents. So that's 1200 CFM. Outdoor units kicked on in heat mode. The vapor line is warm. Perfect, it's working as it should. 